Yes, I did. Can you tell us about that? That's rather horrid. They, that was an American company. And they wanted me to write for them. So I did. But they said, wait a minute, that won't do. Uh, the ch one of the children is not behaving properly. I said, well, no, of course he isn't. That's what the story's about. Ah, but we can't have a child not behaving properly. This left me absolutely speechless. <laughs> How on earth do you have any drama or interest in anything if, nobody, if everybody has to behave nicely? <laughs> this isn't practical. Of course, obviously, the adults could, um, could be a bit villainous, fortunately, even if they were American, <laughs> but not the children. So I found it very difficult writing for that. Um, it's the children on a double-decker bus, isn't it? That's um, the one, yeah. Great fun. Yeah, I, yeah. The idea's all right. Okay. And the other one, I want, you, re you adapted the E. Nesbitt programme, The Phoenix and the, the Carpet. Can you tell me a bit about that? Oh, goodness me, The Venus and the Carpet. That was a very, very nice uh, job, really. I do remember that I, I know that um, Nesbitt wasn't very happy when she wrote it. I think it was a difficult time of her life. And there were one or two errors in it, <laughs> which you only discover when you really read the thing. For instance, you're uh, allowed three wishes a day from the Phoenix. Great. And unfortunately, she had four. And um, this rather started me. How are we going to get out of this problem? I decided that uh, the, the period they were there went over midnight, so they were in another day. <laughs> Hence the fourth. Of course, I know this sounds finicky, but on television, you've got a lot of people watching and a lot of sharp children, and they'll pick it out. They'll notice, especially because on television, it's more condensed them in a book and you would notice if there were four wishes instead of three but of course actually it's a wonderful story for filming and so on and they did it very nicely with a, a studio with the island and the water and everything in it um is it hard to adapt someone else's work for a for a um for tv not too hard i think it uh, it is different. For instance, um, you've only got vision and speech. You can't tell the audience what's happening. Well, unless you had a narrator, and that isn't a very good solution. It's better to come from the cast. So therefore, your dialogue has got to express a lot of things in the book, which the author has just told you. On the other hand, the author can write an awful lot of words in her dialogue uh, because you're reading fairly quickly. You can't have all those words in a dramatic film. So consequently, you've got to condense the dialogue and yet make it say more than the author originally did in order to cover things which she wants to say. And this, this can be quite tricky. What out of all the things you've done in children's writing, what's your what's the one you've enjoyed the most? What have I enjoyed the most? Uh, oh, there was a funny little series I did for schools late on, uh, which became a sort of cult. With apparently the children loved it, uh, a sort of a spoof spy story. It was very stupid in little bits. Mathematics, it was teaching too, of all things. And every in every episode, you had some mathematical problem to solve. The spies had to find it out. Do you remember what it was called, John? Oh, Math Spy, I think. Okay. okay. And that's when you enjoyed the mo most of Well, it was such fun. And it was fun filming it. Uh, and uh, it was shown on the television over and over again um, until I suppose the teachers got so fed up with him. Damn thing. 
over and over. They finally took it off. But it was such a silly little thing, but it really was fun. Okay. I think I've got everything I need. Thank you very much.